Hey everybody, Chuck back. So, you've bought a new Ender 3, you've got it put together and working properly, and you're done printing cats and dogs and beer can holders and Japanese anime figures and all that kind of stuff, and you want to know, what can I print that will make my Ender 3 a better printer? And by the way, if you purchased an Ender 3 from my affiliate links, thank you so much, you are awesome. Keep it up and we will get some new stuff into this channel, new stuff to play with, new stuff to test, maybe even new stuff to break and find out if we like it or not. So I'm going to show you some things that you can print right away that will make your Ender 3 better. First and foremost, my biggest annoyance, let me pop this cover off of here temporarily. I've got it loosened to make this video quicker. This little yellow part. Let me grab a pointer here. This little yellow piece right here. What this does, and you'll need a slightly longer screw. You have to take the stock one out of here and you'll have to put a slightly longer screw in it. And if you don't have an assortment of M2, 3, and 4 screws, do yourself a favor. Go down to your hardware store and buy three or four or five of them of a number of different sizes. Eventually you'll have a boatload of them, but you just bought a new printer and you don't. So... But this little yellow part available on Thingiverse, all the links will be below in the description. This goes in and covers the gap that Creality left between where the card goes in and where the card doesn't go in, the hole that just leads into the control box. I think three or four times when I first got my Ender 3, I stuck the card in too high and it falls inside the control box. Then you gotta pull the cover off and drop the screws all over the place and search around on the floor to get them and put it all back together and probably drop the screws again. This little part here solves that whole problem. You'll never accidentally slide the card inside again. Yeah, there's an uh, there's a upgrade you can do that puts a regular full-size SD card on it, but seriously, put that little yellow piece, print that little yellow piece and put it in and the annoyance of the XD card is gone, at least it was for me. Next thing, I was constantly dropping little screws and things in through the fan. That's not a good thing to have happen, so that's where this piece comes in. This piece, and again, you'll need a couple longer screws, it fits in and it clears, it clears the bed adjustment and it just prevents you from dropping stuff down through that fan onto the circuit board. And that is dropping stuff onto your circuit board, especially if you don't realize you've done it. If it's metal, that's bad juju. We don't want to do that. Next thing, and an important one for me, was our little control panel here. Let me switch hands here. I'm holding the phone. When I first, because it's loose. When I first got this printer, I would put my fingers behind the LCD and actually on the back of the LCD circuit board because it's open as I pressed the button and rolled it and things like that. And I realized that we're coming into monsoon season here in Arizona and man, I am a static electricity generating machine during monsoon season and I better do something about that or I'm going to have some serious problems. So. This little red cover is what, you, what you're after. Print it out in any color makes you happy. He makes one that has the hole for the bell. He makes one that there is no hole there at all in case you want to desolder the bell. And he makes one that has a hump that will cover the bell and maybe deaden it if it annoys you. I don't know that I would recommend desoldering it. I can't, people have done it and say it doesn't matter, but I don't know. Seems kind of pointless to me. If you're gonna upgrade the firmware, it's going to deaden the sound anyway. If you're not going to upgrade the firmware, then either cover it, or if you're feeling brave, desolder it. Shouldn't hurt anything. Again, you will need slightly longer screws, and you see I kind of got a mishmash of different types and sizes of screws in there. But it's something you're never going to take off, hopefully, so not a big deal. The next thing, and this isn't a big thing, are these little cable clips. These hold that ribbon cable back against the back extrusion and keep it from flopping around out here where you're likely to get something hooked in it or whatever. But nonetheless, those print really quick. They pop right in, print two or three of them, and that will solve that little problem. Next, if you're anything like me, you will set tools down and not know where they go. 
So this little tool holder is another, for me, another little fantastic piece. It keeps me from scattering the tools all over my bench and losing them and having to hunt for them. The only negative to this is the hanging down little Allen wrenches. If you're printing things that are probably more than about 170, 180 millimeters high, you're going to want to pull those Allen wrenches out of there or find a different solution. There's also little trays you can make that go down in this area here, but I would just fill those with garbage. So those kind of things, you know what? Man got to know his limitations, and mine is little flat spaces or little things I can put stuff in. I'd fill it full of stuff and then would never find anything again. The next couple things you can do will improve your filament feed. This right here, I think, helped out a lot in improving the angle of the filament going in. Rather than the filament, let me pull the camera back, rather than the filament coming straight down like that, we kind of give it a nice angle going in. This prints in a couple of different pieces. He's got one that, in, in the same file, one that comes out straight, one that has this down angle, and the part that goes into the extrusion sometimes is pretty tight. And that's actually better because then it won't come out. If you tap it in before you put this piece on, you're likely to break it. Fortunately, he makes an end cap for it that you can slide in, and then you can tap it in without breaking it. Then tap the end cap out and work this little piece in. I think it's really improved how the filament... Well, you know what? I can't say that it's actually done anything. I was having under extrusion issues, and I was looking for reasons why, and I thought improving the angle of the filament going in might help, and I kind of like it. The next thing you want to print is this little purple piece back here. This protects the filament from the Z lead screw and kind of helps it once again, helps it kind of go in at an improved angle. And on this particular extruder mechanism, don't know if you can see it, this hole where it goes in, see if I can point at it with my big ham finger, that's, that is threaded because originally this was designed for a CR10 and you were going to put a Bowden tube fitting on it, but there is no room for a Bowden tube fitting on the Ender 3. So, again, guiding it into the center of that hole is probably a good thing. Whether it really makes a difference or not, I don't know, but I just like it. And I think that's about going to do it for the things that you can print right away that's going to make your Ender 3 better. In a future video, we will touch base on other things that you can do, maybe a few more advanced things that you can do, which will help make your Ender 3 a little bit better. I've covered them in previous videos, but I think I just want to touch on something like the five best things that you can do that will make your Ender 3 a better printer. And we'll touch on the Pets Fang, the firmware upgrade, and things like that. But that's it for today. Thanks for coming by and looking. Please like and subscribe if you're thinking about buying a printer please consider clicking on my affiliate link. You guys have been absolutely awesome. Have a great day, and I'll see you again soon.